Hey YouTube, how's it going? So, uh, yet again, making more changes to the computer. Uh, just wanted to go over them with you. Uh, since we last had our little chit chat, um, I have added two different RAID controllers to my computer down here. An additional four hard drives. Changed out the operating system drives for uh, solid state drives and spread the four different hard drive arrays across two different uh, RAID controllers, both of which are uh, not integrated to the motherboard. So what we have left is a smoking machine. Let's get this thing booted, and uh, this video is going to be about uh, tweaking your computer uh, for optimal performance using uh, the video editing software that I use, which is uh, Adobe CS6. So, let's look at that in a second. Okay, how's it going YouTube? We're going to uh, check out this uh, hard drive configuration that I have set up right now. Uh, you'll notice that there are four drives here. Uh, this is actually an external uh, SATA uh, array that uh, just ignore that for time being. This is my Windows uh, drive. It's made up of four solid state drives in a RAID 5 array. Uh, the second disk here is made up of uh, four uh, 150 gig uh, Velociraptor hard drives, 10,000 RPM, 32 megs of cache each, uh, as is this drive as well. As uh, far as my uh, source and captures drive, uh, that's double the size. That's made of 300 gigabyte drives. Uh, those also have 32 megs of cache on them. They're Velociraptors uh, that also run 10,000 RPM. Uh, I use a larger drive for the sources. Typically, uh, sources files are much larger uh, uncompressed, and there's more of them than there are the renders. Uh, the renders are also on a different RAID controller than the sources. Uh, purpose behind that is you have the power of the two uh, independent controllers working for you, uh, sending data back and forth. Also, uh, the operating system is on a separate uh, RAID controller, as is the uh, swap files for the operating system. So there again, you have uh, the two different buses working for you uh, much faster this way that I've that I've noticed. Uh, another thing that I've done is uh, made some changes in After Effects as well as in Adobe Premiere uh, to make things just a little bit speedy uh, or on the uh, on the render. So I'll show you that here. We have After Effects open now, and we're going to go to Edit and Preferences, and down to Media Disk Cache. Okay, and the disk cache is uh, going to be on a separate folder from the program and a separate folder from the working files. Uh, the Media Cache is as well. Uh, that again. Uh, both of these, especially the uh, disk cache you want to have on a fastest drive in the system. Uh, so I, I do would have it on a smaller disk on the other side of the coin. Uh, it's the fastest disk in the machine, so uh, we're kind of good to go there. Another thing that you want to take a look at uh, is the under memory and multiprocessing. Uh, you want to uh, set up your computer if you have a dual uh, processor computer like this one. Uh, or even if you have a multi-threading, multi-core uh, system, you definitely want to uh, take advantage of this right here. Um, you know, the minimum requirement for this, I think, is something like 2 gigabytes or 4 gigabytes. It's something silly uh, of RAM. I have uh, 42 gigabytes of RAM installed, and uh, I'm, I've am i maxed out my motherboard. Uh, memory is so cheap nowadays, there's really no, no tough issue uh, populating your machine with at least 24 gigabytes of RAM for under $200. Uh, seems pretty easy. Uh, anyway, uh, here you're able to divvy up, if you will, uh, the number of cores and the amount of memory per core uh, dedicated specific to uh, After Effects, Premiere, 
and in the encoder and some other programs there. And what I have here, I have 16 processors, and we're going to reserve four of them uh, for other applications aside from Premiere and these other uh, Adobe products. And so I have three gigabytes of RAM dedicated to 12 different CPUs uh, for After Effects, Premiere, you name it. Uh, that's one good trick you want to do. Also, uh, you know, I showed you the uh, these two files. These are specific to After Effects. Now, if we go into Premiere, we can show you. Uh, Premiere has uh, files that it uses while you're rendering uh, video, like uh, transitions and uh, a different. Uh, just little pieces of vi video that it creates to render and it stores them uh, in what they call scratch disk and I have uh, them stored outside the area where I'll be working. Uh, the uh, video preview scratch disk is in the same location as my uh, swap file and it was the same location as the uh, the data cache, uh, disk cache rather, in After Effects. The uh, this one here is in the same as the source media, and uh, it's just a separate disk from the uh, the uh, renders disk. So as long as you keep those separate, uh, things will be faster. So just wanted to show you that. And one last thing here, uh, the Mercury playback engine, as well as the uh, GPU addition with a CUDA compliant NVIDIA uh, video card. Uh, there is a list on Adobe's website that you might want to check out if you're going to be purchasing the software you uh, are using it currently but aren't aware. Uh, the software is capable of using the uh, NVIDIA CUDA engine on their GPUs uh, for additional rendering power. It doesn't take as much CPU time. It takes a lot of the uh, power from the GPU and uh, frees up a lot of the CPU utilization that otherwise you'd be using uh, doing those renders. So uh, take a look at uh, Adobe's website. Uh, my uh, video card is an NVIDIA 570 and I might be upgrading. Actually, I have two 570s in this ma uh, machine now. Uh, the only reason I have two is I run uh, one monitor uh, in the very first bus, uh, very first slot on the motherboard. And I use one monitor and the uh, other two that you saw in the video uh, of my machine, I run off the other card. Uh, I use the uh, just the, the first card in the machine is this, uh, this one that you'll see here. Uh, so it's doing the least amount of work. Uh, one last thing is how to move the, your swap file for your operating system to a different drive. So I've moved mine from the uh, regular location. So anyway, uh, to do that, uh, move your uh, swap file, you uh, right click on computer, or you could go uh, to your start button and right click on computer there, and you go to properties, and then you click on advanced system settings, and there at the very top where it says performance, you click settings again, and then again, uh, you want to click Advanced tab. And then here, there's a Change button for your virtual memory, uh, the paging file. Now, uh, what it was, it looked similar to this. This Windows 7 C drive looked like this system managed. And actually, I should make this a custom size. Um, so let, I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. But uh, basically, what you want to do is, under Windows 7 or your C drive, what you're going to do is click no page file. Uh, then where you want to put it, you uh, go ahead and put it. Uh, so I'd click System Manage, or you can do Custom Size. And I'm going to give it a size one and a half times larger than my uh, RAM. So I'm going to go uh, call it 64 megs. And that's roughly a little less than 64 megs, but uh, and it's upset. Uh, the initial size and then maximum. They want a maximum size. So really, I'm going to change this to 42 megs, and I'll give it a maximum of 64. So that'll work like that. And uh, let's see. That's uh, how you want to change your uh, swap file. Uh, anyway, that's all I wanted to show you, YouTube. Uh, 
getting the most out of CS6 uh, using After Effects and Adobe Premiere. Uh, hope uh, you learned something. By no stretch is this an expert video. Uh, I'm pretty new to After Effects and Premiere and uh, would enjoy uh, any professionals out there's opinion. Uh, I could definitely use a lesson and some schooling. So anyway, uh, SoCal, you guys take it easy.